guys, welcome to my channel again. You know it's Joe Jaguar. Okay, so um, I am almost ready to move. Uh, my closing date was actually uh, went forward about a month. Um, so anyway, so I got about four weeks from this uh, time right now, but it might be even shorter when you guys watch it because depending when I put this astro video up. So I'm gonna have to do a few uh, pre-videos and uh, early and then that way I, at least I have a few to uh, to do for you know my once a week video um, okay anyway let's talk about this little guy here so this is a refractor telescope it is not an apple chromatic just a regular acromat two lenses in it um, and this is called a short tube as you can see it's pretty short this is called, so this is a 102, 102 millimeter, which is 4 inch f5. f5, how you get that is the diameter of the lens or mirror times 5 before it reaches the, you know, the focus point. So they used to call these also, you know, short tube refractors and uh, sometimes it used to be called a rich field uh, telescope. Why? Because because it's so short, you actually get a huge wide field of view. Um, kind of almost like a binocular type of view. Um, it is low power type of thing. So I'm going to show you guys what is this made for, what is it good for, what could you use it for, and what is it not good for. Because I hear a lot of people, not here, I read a lot of people on the forum sometimes, they might pick something like this because it's light, it's portable, it's manageable. Um, but then they're not impressed by what it could do because it can't do everything. It's kind of specific. Okay, so uh, these were really popular. Now, I got one of these uh, probably 1997, 1998 uh, because uh, the family and us went on uh, Cancun for a vacation. So there is a few version of these. Um, this one is the 4 inch f5 version now they have one that's a bit smaller uh, about like this a little bit uh, less diameter to 80 millimeter f5 that's very popular because uh, it's like I said it's fits about that big uh, it's great uh, you know it's very light you can travel with it it is a refractor so you don't have to worry about the mirrors being collimated otherwise you're not going to get the best views so some people pick refractors just just on, based on that they don't have to worry about collimation refractors are just it's like a lens you just take it out and you just look or shoot through it and there you go very simple uh, that's one of the best benefits okay what did I use it for oh, or actually let me show you uh, you know what this mount is an EQ4, you've seen it probably on my other scopes, my Takahashi 4 inch. Um, you don't really need something this big uh, for it. Um, usually this, uh, this guy, uh, the 4 inch size, comes in an AZ3, that's Altazimuth 3, which is fine. It's a lightweight, uh, or yeah, I guess a lightweight, medium-ish weight mount. It's not too light, it's not a tripod type of thing. Has uh, dual slow motion controls um, so that, that's a great setup uh, type of thing so you don't need anything this big because it'd be a little bit heavy the whole point of the short tube refractors is it's small short lightweight portable um, okay so this is a 400 millimeter focal length uh, this comes with a two inch uh, Crayford focuser single speed um, and then it has a and it's a two inch focuser which is nice the 80 millimeter is only uh, you know one and a quarter inch um, focuser which is the, the normal but this one you can swap let me see if I can show you guys take out the diagonal like right now I have the 90 degree diagonal which is great for the nighttime viewing and if you use a 45 degree that's for terrestrial viewing now you could pop in this big boy this is a two inch uh, diagonal on here because it has a two inch focuser um, I guess I'll show I can show that to you guys uh, let's see if I can get that adapter out uh, one more screw I'm trying to do it but uh, okay here we go take out the cap and by doing this putting a two inch diagonal 
you can put a two inch low power, like a 32 millimeter um, mead or any uh, two inch eyepiece, 32 millimeter ultra wide to super wide, you know, anything like that. And your view is just going to be humongous. Again, it's going to be like a binocular type of, of view. Um, I normally have the two inch on anyway. Because uh, you could swap the inch and a quarter out, you don't have to change anything. But if you want a two inch eyepiece and you want to see something really wide, it, it's perfect for that. Um, okay, so the most popular one is the 80 millimeter f5, then it's this guy. They do have a 120, sorry, 120 millimeter uh, refractor f5, and then it used to also be popular at six inch f5 as well. Uh, refractor, but those are becoming harder to find. There's only like uh, ES, uh, Explorer Scientific, uh, that's short uh, for ES, um, that makes the 6 inch F5, but of course it's kind of heavy. So what did I use it for? So a couple things I used to do it for. So I used to put a filter, solar filter, on the front. This is not a glass filter. This is made by Thousand Oaks and it's like a film. Uh, or a polymer type of thing, or mylar, some companies. But um, you know, it's very portable, especially on an AZ3 type of mount. Um, and just so you can view the sun with its natural color. Uh, it'll be orange, yellow color. But so I used to use it for that. So a quick portable solar, a white solar telescope for the daytime view. Now, also, what I used to use it for, if you go up north, like I used to go a lot and you want something that's small, uh, powerful, wide field, and if you're by the lake, uh, river, uh, if you like to look at animals, trees, birds, anything like that, or maybe a, a, a geese on inside the lake, or that type of thing, this is like perfect for it. Because it's very similar to like a spotting telescope, but you get more power out of it. Uh, type of thing. So that's what I used to use it for, looking at the lake, looking at, uh, you know, that type of thing. But for the nighttime, uh, because, you know, when you get away on dark, really dark country skies, uh, this thing, because you know, it's really wide field, you can capture some of those huge objects out there, like the North American uh, Nebula. You can easily fit the whole thing in its frame even with the Pelican Nebula. So some of those huge things, maybe the Andromeda Galaxy, there's a lot of big things, scanning the Milky Way um, type of thing. So that's what this guy was made for. It's a low power. You can probably take it up to, you know, like, I mean, you can really put any eyepiece in there and you can take it to its maximum 200 power if you do, two, if, if you do 50 times per inch, the normal uh, formula for it. But normally, uh, you know, you use this guy as a couple things. If you want to see some daytime stuff, and you want something light, I mean, you can use the 4-inch. It's a little bit big, um, you know, but they do have the 80 millimeter. Again, it's probably about that big, um, 80 millimeter worth of diameter, you know, so it's lighter, more portable. So if you like to do daytime stuff, animals, bird watching, anything on the, the water, that's perfect for it. Or even this guy is a little bit bigger, it'd be a little bit heavier, but there's still, it would be okay. The other two, the 120 millimeter and the six inch would be too big for the daytime stuff. Uh, but anyway, for if you like to sweep the Milky Way, those large extended objects, uh, it, you know, it's perfect for that. Uh, and that's what I used to use it for. So for daytime, the sun was perfect type of thing, going up to the cottage, camping, trailer, anything up north, and you want to see those type of things, that's what it's made for. What it's not made for, and I've read sometimes people get disappointed, is high power, how, sorry, high planetary power. Um, if you are interested in that, you should not get a short tube refractor, because the power, like let's say if you put a 32 millimeter eyepiece, inch and a quarter, no, it doesn't have to be too in here, it's probably going to be like 16 power. So just a little bit more than what a binocular would do. So even if you put a 10 millimeter, you know, you probably, it's only going to be 40 power type of thing. So it's not meant for high planetary power. And because it's F5, you're going to have lots of false color on you know, like the, the moon, the bright planets and the bright, brighter stars. 
So you don't want to use it for that. If you're interested in more of the planetary stuff, you should get the 4H F10. So it's going to be twice as long, but the color is going to be very minimal. And again, we're not talking any expensive refractors, apochromatic. But if you want planetary stuff or high power double star splitting or something like that, don't get this short tube. You're not going to like it. You're probably most likely going to be disappointed because it doesn't do too well on the planets where you want to push the power close and you want to see the rings of Saturn, you want to see some of its moons, you want to see, uh, you know, in Saturn's ring it has like a gap, a couple, well there's a few gaps, but the easiest one, the Cassini division, it's, you're really pushing this telescope to do that. It wasn't meant for that. So, if, uh, you know, I hear that sometimes in the forums people are disappointed and the, th the fact is you guys, uh, those people, they picked the wrong one, right? But if you came to me and said, Joe, I want a telescope that's for up north, bird watching, land viewing. I like to look at the lake too. But, you know, once in a while too, I'm not a real astronomy buff or, uh, you know, serious into that. Uh, but if the moon is out or Jupiter, Saturn's out, once in a while I might look at it. Then, okay, that, that's, that fits both needs because this is perfect for the wide field Milky Way viewing or that type of stuff. It's great for terrestrial viewing if you have the inch, you know, the 45 degree uh, uh, prism in there. And uh, if you're just going to see, you know, the planets or the moon once in a blue moon, then fine, get something like that. But if your needs are more, you know, I want to see more of planet stuff and maybe once in a blue moon I might look at a uh, uh, the terrestrial viewing, land viewing, then maybe get something like the F8. So it's not super narrow field of view. Uh, still is like medium where you can kind of do them both. Uh, but anyway, so that's it. So short tube refractor again. And if I take out this front hood here, as you can see, now you can see how small it is. And if I take the uh, diagonal, two inch diagonal out, now you can see how small this sucker is for a four inch. So if you put the caps on here, Easily you can take it on a plane. And I'm actually, there we go. Now I'm fully collapsed. So let me take that out so you guys can see it even closer. So if you're looking for something also that's very small, portable uh, type of thing, probably be very hard to uh, to match this. I mean, Maksutovs are, and SCTs are very small too, uh, but it, they're going to have narrow field of view. So if you're looking for something for low power, wide field of views like a kind of like a binocular can do a little bit of day a little bit of night a little bit of everything they have an 80 millimeter version uh, it's even going to be smaller than this maybe uh, about a third less that will be even lighter so those are great uh, scopes this is just the uh, dust cap or the dew cap for it so once I put that it makes it a lot bigger um, now let me show you guys why if this sucker if you get it with the 45 degree prism, why you should buy a um, 90 degree when you look at the planets. Okay, so let me see if I can pull this out a little bit here. Let me just lock it. I don't want it to slip. So let me show you guys. Now with the 90 degree, hopefully you guys can still see this. So with the 90 degree on this angle, what's going on? Get in there. I could be viewing like this, on this angle. Now, the 45 degree, uh, you know what, I'm just going to superimpose it, so just pretend that's in like that. Now, I would be looking almost like that. Now, imagine if this guy, and I'll do it for you guys, if I was even at looking more higher up uh, type of thing. So, let's say I was at that angle, hopefully you guys can, you know, you can see, so let me... If I was viewing at this angle now, as you can see, uh, the 45 degree, I'm really going to be almost looking at the very bottom. So the 45 degree is great for the terrestrial viewing, so you're going to be more looking straight um, type of thing. But if you, if you came with, let me put the camera back, guys. So I would say... If it came with a 90 degree and you're not going to do too much terrestrial viewing, then just keep the 90. The only difference is going to be 
the image is going to be flipped over, like when you look at a mirror, it's inverted, uh, left to right. So that's it. So if that doesn't bother you, if you're looking at land viewing an animal, you know, in reality, if it's moving right in, in your view, it's going to be moving left. It's not a big deal. I don't even mind it at all, right? But if it comes with a 45 degree uh, and you're going to be using it for anything nighttime, it's going to be a pain in the neck, literally, um, if you don't have the 90 degree. If it does, just look in the use forums. There's lots of use forums, uh, Canada wide. Astro buy and sell, then they have a, uh, a UK version uh, buy and sell. You can find a inch and a quarter, 90 degree, you know, basic one for like 20 bucks. Uh, some, and that could be even brand new as well. Because uh, sometimes it comes with the scope and a lot of people, they don't even need it. They'll just dump it for 20 bucks. That's Canadian. So you could even find it if it's UK, that's probably like 12 bucks. So that's just my... Uh, recommendation for you guys if it already comes with a 90 degree just keep it for both if it's 45 you probably want to pick up a 90 degree or if you do not like the inverted uh, image of the 90 degree when you're looking at land viewing then buy a 45 degree again you, you can find these again uh, the 45 the same thing 20 bucks used and sometimes new uh, because you get it with scopes and people have better stuff anyway uh, so they just recoup a couple bucks. So again, so this is what a short tube is good for. Again, I'm going to run that down for you. If you want something that's portable, that's light. Again, without the dew cap, as you can see, without the diagonal, it's very short for a 4-inch refractor. It's going to be very hard to beat. In fact, probably not many scopes are going to beat it if you want something that's a wide field, rich view. Uh, especially if you go up north where you can see the Milky Way and you want to see some of those huge extended objects, uh, that's perfect for that. If you also like to do some land viewing, looking at the lake, animals, bird watching, anything in daytime, great for that. I also use it again as the white solar filter um, uh, type of thing to look at the sun in the white um, view, would great for that too. Um, what it doesn't do good again is high high power viewing. So if that's what you have a good interest in, do not pick this guy or the 80 millimeter version, the 120 millimeter version, or the six inch. Just don't get a short one. Okay, if you're interested in the planets, you want to get them up and close, you want to get that image quality good, the color down, then don't get a short one. Get an F8 to F10 and you'll be much happier. So I just wanted to show you guys uh, that's what I use it for, those few th different things. So it's kind of, this guy kind of does a three, four different things. Uh, so a lot of people have this type of thing. Uh, again, it's not, not that great on the planets, but if you're just going to look once in a blue moon, then it's fine. You're just going to have a lot of false color on it. And the image quality isn't going to be the greatest because the three lights colors are not actually merging to one point. That's why you get that false color. Uh, they're going to be coming at different angles, uh, or not angles, they're going to be, the, the focus point is going to be different for each of the light. That's why the longer you make it, the more corrected that light will be. Uh, or if you, get, if you get a short tube version and it's an apple chromatic, then that third lens is correcting that uh, false color as well. So either or. Uh, again, that's what a short tube refractor looks like, that's what it's good for, that's what it's not good for. So stay tuned, uh, maybe in about two weeks, uh, I might do a vlog of my new place. Maybe you guys would like to see it type of thing. Uh, and that's the video for this guy. Cheers, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Cheers.